Hello, my name is Sujit Konan. Welcome to this module on waste management. In this module, we will be discussing existing legal framework in India relating to waste management. So the idea is to discuss or to understand briefly the nature, the scope and the source of uh, the legal framework relating to waste management in India. So we will be discussing, we, I mean to put in a different way, we will not be discussing all legal instruments relating to waste management in India. Instead, I mean that's not, I mean within this short uh, <coughs> available time, we will be dis discussing some of the key instruments and their approaches and then the students are advised to look at other <coughs> other available legal instruments relating to waste management both at the central level as well as at the state level. So, we will be also mentioning or discussing briefly some of the key cases relating to waste management in India. And before we move into, before we discuss, discuss the substantive aspects of waste management laws in India, let us try to understand what is the context in which we discuss waste management. And as, as some of the statistics shows, safe management and scientific disposal of waste is a critical issue in India. Some of this, including the government statistics, it shows that approximately 90 percent of the municipal solid waste is being disposed unscientifically or I mean <coughs> or many of this, many of this uh, municipal solid waste are being disposed without treatment at all. And the, the, there is another, another major context is, I mean across India in many places various public protests are ongoing against these landfills and this, pop, this, this uh, brings into, li in, into limelight some of the key issues I mean relating to environmental justice and equity as far as waste management is concerned. For example, the key question is where are we dumping waste, how are we disposing it, in, which vis in whose vicinity we are in whose vicinity we are conducting waste disposal and management or to put in a different way where these waste are coming and where they are being dumped or whether for disposal or for um, <coughs> just storage. And the major reasons why we are concerned with waste management is its, imp its obvious implications on public health and environment. So, these are the major rationale behind waste management law in India that is to minimize the implications or adverse implications of wasters on public health and environment. So, again I mean what is what is what is meant by the term waste management? What are, when we say waste management, what are the activities and stages involved in this process? So, I mean as per the legal, uh, legal definition available, it involves various stages such as collection, transportation, processing, recycling or scientific disposal and it also involves monitoring of all these processes. And when we say waste management or the term waste, it, it generally includes waste, waste materials produced by human activity. That means, I mean in these cases generally the, the natural waste, I mean wastes produced by the natural process are, be <coughs> are not included or not in within the mandate of, generally within the mandate of this waste management laws. And the major purpose of this waste management legal frame, legal framework relating to the ma to the waste ma to waste management is, as I already mentioned, to reduce the impacts on health and environment. And another key impact and another key purpose of waste management legal frame waste management process is to recover resources through recycling. That means, I mean, the idea of uh, waste being converted into wealth. That means there are quite a there are there, there could be a number of materials or materials that are that are that, <coughs> that can be reused in the in the waste. So the, one of the major purposes of this waste management process is to identify those materials that could be recycled and reused. So that means I mean to 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 minimize the actual disposal. Now let us try to map take a mapping of the legal framework relating to waste management in India. And as we have already discussed, I mean we are not, our purpose is not going to make an illust or to examine all laws relating to all or all legal instruments relating to waste management. Instead, we will be looking at some of the key instruments and some of the key instruments at, at the central level and the briefly the legal framework at the state level and then briefly we will be looking at case laws relating to waste management in India. So, as far as the key legal framework, key legal instrument is concerned, this is, this is, this, it is 
Environment Protection Act 1986, probably the most important legal instrument in the context of waste management in India. This is a legislation adopted by adopted at the central level. And as we can see from Environment Protection Act 1986, there is perhaps, I mean, we will not find a provision on waste management per se. This is an umbrella legislation that focuses broadly on, that generally on environment protection measures in India. However, this, this legislation is extremely important in the context of waste management because a number of rules have been adopted under this 1986 act that focuses on different kind of waste. When it is a different kind of waste, this has been an approach, a key approach followed under, followed under the Environment Protection Act 1986 because we have different rules addressing different wastes. For example, we have, diff uh, we have a separate rule on legal instrument on municipal solid waste, we have a separate legal instrument on hazardous waste and so is the case with electronic waste. So, in this module, we will be dealing with municipal or we will be briefly discussing municipal solid waste rule, rules on hazardous waste and rules on electronic waste. However, students are advised to look at other legal instruments related to wastes, for example, biomedical waste or plastics, plastics to get a comprehensive idea of the legal framework relating to waste management in India. In addition to Environment Protection Act 1986, at the state level, we have uh, two sets of laws. For example, in the rural context, we have Panchayati Raj laws and the urban context, we have law governing urban local bodies. The, the importance of these laws in the context of waste management is these laws essentially contain provisions relating to waste management and these laws inevitably makes it a duty of the local bodies, whether it is it, whether it is in both in the rural as well as in the urban context to address the issues of waste management. And in addition to these statutes, there, there, are, there are a set of case laws dealing with waste management in India and we will be covering some of the important case laws in this context. And in addition to these, these, these statutes and case laws, we have a, a, a number of policies, programs and schemes both at the central level as well as at the state level dealing with waste management. For example, Nirmal Bharat Abhiyan, which, is, which has been recently renamed as Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. Because while these policies and programs are extremely important, we will not be discussing in detail these policies and programs. Instead, students are advised or strongly advised, encouraged to look at all these policies and programs to get a comprehensive idea about the overall, overall framework relating to waste management in India. As we have already mentioned, our focus as far as the examination of the legal instrument is concerned, we will be focusing on three, three, three instruments. One, I mean, instruments relating to municipal solid waste, electronic waste and hazardous waste. First is municipal solid waste management. So, when we say municipal solid waste management, what are the processes and stages involved in this process? It involves generation, storage, collection, transfer, transport, processing and disposal of municipal solid waste. So, when we say municipal solid waste, what I mean the municipal solid waste rules have provided a, a definition of municipal, so an illustrative definition of municipal solid waste which includes food waste, rubbish, commercial waste, institutional waste, street sweeping waste, etc. So, that means I mean it <coughs> the, the, the rule or the legal instrument focuses on various stages involved in the econo in the in the eco-friendly disposal and management of solid waste. So, municipal solid waste management and handling rules was adopted in 2000. So, before we get into the substantive aspect of the rules, it is pertinent to mention the role of the, 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 the role played by the Supreme Court in the adoption of the rules. There was a case <coughs> before the Supreme Court called Almitra Patel case 2000 decided by the Supreme Court in, in 2000. And this case is extremely important in the context of municipal solid waste management and handling rules 2000 because the, the, there was a committee set up by the Supreme Court by, uh, in, as part of this Almitra Patel case and this committee drafted a rule, uh, the dra drafted a rule on uh, a document on municipal solid waste management that <coughs> became the foundation of municipal solid waste management rules. So, what we can see is that the Supreme Court played a significant role in the adoption of Municipal Solid Waste Management Rules 2000. A key feature of the Municipal Solid Waste Management Rule is the duty entrusted with the municipal authority. 
municipal authority is the key institutional mechanism that has been entrusted with important functions relating to, to the solid, to solid waste management which includes infrastructure development for collection, storage, segregation, transportation, processing and disposal of municipal solid wastes. As we can see that municipal authority is duty bound to make to, to establish infrastructures for all these key processes involved in the management process in the process of solid waste management. This also includes house to house collection of municipal solid waste solid wastes. And there is an important part of this, the, the, <coughs> this provision is that the municipal authority is expected to arrange house to house collection on a basis of pre informed timings and schedules. And the, uh, the duty of the municipal authority also involves establishment and maintenance of hygienic and sanitary storage facilities. That means another major duty is, is the arrangement of storage facilities for municipal solid waste manage, solid wastes. And the rule also provides some minute technical aspects of storage facilities. For example, it says that the storage facility should not be opened or it also says that the storage facility should be aesthetically acceptable and user friendly. And there, are, there, there is another interesting aspect of the storage facility as and which or, sto or the rules relating to storage storage of municipal solid waste is that it, it, it prescribes different colors for different kind of municipal solid wastes. For example, it says green color storage facility for biodegradable wastes, white color for recyclable waste and black color for other wastes. One important aspect to be mentioned in this context is that it starts, I mean most of I mean the, the important provisions or the most of the provisions of municipal solid waste management rules focuses on the post generation aspects of municipal solid waste because it starts from collection, transportation and, um, and, and, and ends in the disposal of municipal solid waste. So the key question is what about the generation of waste? So as far as the, I mean one of the important aspect of, of, so of waste management is the viable approach, the preferred approach should be from cradle to grave, grave, grave approach. That means one should, I mean the policy should focus or policy, the focus of the policy should begin from the generation of the waste. That means we have to minimize the generation of, of wastes and whatever wastes are generated then we have to have a mechanism for eco-friendly management and disposal of such wastes. But the municipal solid waste management rules seems to be inadequately focusing on the generation part of the process. Other important regulations as far as a, a prescribed under the municipal solid waste rules is the manual handling of waste. It, it prohibits manual handling of municipal solid waste. However, this prohibition is not absolute. There are some exceptions because manual handling of waste is, is permitted under some exceptional circumstances or some unavoidable circumstances. But the, the, the rules also prescribes that whenever the municipal handling or the, the manual handling of wastes is to be permitted, there should be adequate precaution or proper precaution for the safety of workers. It also provides for covering of vehicles using transportation of wastes. Another major major rule <coughs> rule provided under the municipal solid waste management rules is regarding landfills. It discusses about or it deals with some technical aspects of uh, of landfills. For example, uh, the distance to be maintained from habitat, the habitat clusters and forest areas or water bodies of national parks. It also talks about the technical aspects of landfill. For example construction of non-permeable lining system at the base and walls of waste disposal area. It also addresses the post closure part of landfill. For example, I mean, I mean indirectly or, 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 or directly it insists that landfills, landfills can't be neglected after closure. I mean the, the rules insist or the rule prescribes that it has to be taken care of by the municipal authorities at least for 15 years after its closure. It also talks about periodic health inspections of workers at landfill site. So what we can see is that broadly it, it addresses municipal or the management involves or it addresses addresses or tries to, to address, the, address, the, address the waste management issues from, from its uh, collection or how door to door collection to transportation to storage including in the context of landfills. 
As far as landfill is concerned, one of the important issues, issues that arises in this context is the environmental injustice involved in this process. For example, we also have to look at where these wastes are being dumped, particularly in the context of landfill. This is the context where I mean a number of public protests needs to be look, looked against, looked, looked uh, public protest against landfill that needs to be looked. For example, many in many cases, this these municipal solid wastes are being dumped in remote areas where poor and vulnerable people live. Or particularly, I mean, I mean. I mean, to put it in a different way, particularly in the urban context, wastes are being collected from the urban areas and being dumped at the peri-urban or rural areas, where rural areas where poor and vulnerable people are living. So, this is a clear case of envi uh, environmental just injustice involved in the municipal solid waste management process. Now, another major part of this municipal or major another key dimension of this role is the monitoring part. As far as monitoring is concerned, the duty is entrusted with the state pollution control board. And this is like I mean, pollution control board is, uh, is entrusted with the duty to ensure compliance with the rules and the monitoring also involves the waste processing and dispo I mean the monitoring of waste processing and disposal facilities. So, le let us move on to the next major legal instrument that is electronic waste management. So, before we get into it, I mean what is the major context in which we discuss electronic waste? Electronic waste is the electric and electronic equipment rejected after their manufacturing or repairing process. So, broadly speaking, it talks about end of life electronic equipments. So, what to do with this end of life electronic equipments? Why we are concerned with such electronic waste? Because over, uh, over the last few decades in India especially, we have seen increased use of electronic equipment. So, why this increased use of electronic equipment is an issue because we, we are slowly moving towards or into the habit of changing our electronic equipment quite often because the technology is being upgraded, upgraded almost on a, I mean on a routine basis. So, everyone uh, has a tendency to upgrade their electronic, uh, electronic equipment that leads to discarding of the previous equipment. So, the, this <coughs> electronic waste is a serious issue that India is facing currently. So, the, one of the major reasons for this electronic waste issue is our focus is only on use of electronic equipments and we tend to discard what happens to all those electronic waste or discarded electronic equipments or the end of life electronic equipments. The process of management of electronic waste involves collection, scientific dispose, recycling and reuse of uh, electronic electronic wastes. So, an interesting part in an interesting part to be noticed in this process is like I mean there are quite electronic waste is not completely a waste. There could be a many there could be many substances that can be recycled and reused. So, in this case recycling and reuse are major parts of electronic waste management process. And e e electronic waste management and handling rules was adopted in 2011. Again this instrument was also adopted under the Environment Protection Act 1986. The purpose of this, this legal instrument was, uh, was to ensure environmentally sound, re sound management of electronic waste which essentially includes recycling and reuse. When we say that the current scenario in, as far as current scenario in the context of electronic waste management is like largely this is being managed by the unorganized sector. That means I mean still I mean we are in need of a proper organized sector for electro e-waste management. So, what is the key features or what are the key features of the e-waste rules 2011? So, a major feature of, e e feature of the e-waste rules 2011 is this idea called extended producers responsibility. So, this means the duty is upon the producers of the electronic equipment to, to design and implement a proper system for, for collection as well as of environmentally sound management of electronic wastes. So, that means this is it is for the producers to set up an the proper establishment for proper management of e-wasters. And while it is so, it, it provides an exception to some uh, to, to bulk consumers because it is the duty of the bulk consumers to channelize all their e-waste genera generated in their establishments and, uh, and to, to let it reach to the proper mechanisms, mechanisms established by the producers. 
and like all other uh, like almost all other legal instruments in the context of waste management the monitoring duty is uh, upon the pollution control board i mean some of the important aspects of this monitoring is that all uh, all e waste management establishments require a no objection certificate from the state pollution control board and when we say no objection certificate this also 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 very uh, uh, plays a critical role in the context of interstate movement of electronic wastes because in this case the a, a permission from the state pollution control board of all transit states are also mandatory and another monitoring part is that producers are required to maintain a record of e waste and then it is the duty of the state pollution control board to 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 scrutinize the record to move on the third important instrument is the rule in the instrument on hazardous waste management so the context of context in which we discuss about hazardous waste management is the rapid industrialization increased the use of chemicals and rise of chemical industries so this has led to the uh, to a huge generation of hazardous wastes and then that that brings us the context for any an eco friendly management and disposal of hazardous wastes the legal responses in this context has been hazardous wastes management and handling rules 1989 and this was later on modified in in 2008 now that we have a new document called hazardous waste management handling and transboundary movement rules 2000 a significant difference of this 2008 instrument when compared to 1989 instrument is that this is a comprehensive instrument which covers both the domestic aspects of hazardous waste management as well as the transboundary movement of hazardous waste management i mean the the rational behind this rule is again i mean the, to to protect health and environment from this menace of hazardous waste so one important aspect of hazardous waste management rules 2008 is that it does not deal with waste water municipal solid wastes radioactive wastes and bio wastes i mean the reason is quite clear because as far as these wastes are concerned there is there are separate instruments in existence and it talks about i mean hazardous waste management uh, rules entrust the responsibility for eco friendly management of hazardous waste with occupiers that means i mean it it it, it casts duty upon upon the cre upon the producers of hazardous wastes to to manage to 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 establish a set uh, mechanism whether through themselves or to entrust it to uh, to another establish an, another <coughs> individual or company having sufficient mechanism for hazardous waste management and disposal another important aspect of this this the hazardous waste management rule is prevention of accidents because it says that all occupiers i mean it it, it casts a duty upon all this manage all this for example industries a duty to take all adequate steps to prevent accidents and limit their consequences on human beings and environment and similarly safety of workers is an important aspect addressed under this another major aspect addressed under this rule is transboundary movement and in in the case of transboundary movement an important part is the basel, basel convention convention basel convention on transboundary movement of hazardous waste and its disposal here the nodal ministry is ministry of environment and forest and the the key regulatory part is that prohibition of impo i mean i mean this document this legal instrument prohibits import of hazardous wastes from any country to india for disposal that means there can't be an impo- can't be import of hazardous wastes to india for disposal import of hazardous wastes to india is permitted only in exceptional circumstances where the import is import of hazardous waste is for recycling or recovery or reuse similarly export of hazardous waste to any other country is also prohibited unless this is for reuse uh, reuse or disposal in both this export and import context prior informed consent is 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 mandatory in 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 case there is a viola- there is import or export is, uh, is is import or export happens by violating the rules the consequences is such import ex- such import for example if there is a hazardous waste import to india without getting prior in prior informed consent consent from the nodal ministry such imports are liable to be re-exported liability is a crucial a crucial aspect covered under the under the hazardous waste management rule because it says that the occupier importer transporter and moder or moder or operator of a facility is liable for all damages caused to the environment and third party so this means <coughs> it says that due to improper ha- if such damages are caused 
due to improper handling of hazardous wastes or disposal of hazardous wastes. This seems to indicate that the this hazardous waste management rule is uh, fixing liability on the basis of fault. This needs to be contrasted with some of the recent some of the developments initiated at the at the uh, under the auspices of the Supreme Court of India that is the concept of absolute liability where the Supreme Court in the oleum like oleum gas leak case in 1986 supported or introduced this idea of absolute liability which absolute liability in cases of industrial accidents that involves hazardous wastes. There seems to be a contrast between this absolute liability as introduced by the Supreme Court in the oil and gas leak case and this fault based liability that seems to be the case as prescribed under the municipal under the hazardous waste management rules. And now briefly let us broadly <coughs> take a mapping of state level laws which I already have mentioned that the PRI Panchayati Raj institution laws and, and the law relating to urban local bodies that cast responsibility on the local bodies to have a proper mechanism for the, for the management of hazardous wastes. Uh, when we look at this issue there is a sta I mean this duty is not just a statutory duty emanating from law relating to PR and Panchayati Raj institutions or urban local bodies. Instead this is also a constitutional duty that emanates both from article 21 the right to life as well as from directive state directive principles of state policy. There are quite a few interesting cases or pertinent or, or relevant cases in this context. For example, in the case of uh, Municipal Council Ratlam versus Vardhi Chand, where the Supreme Court said that it is a statutory duty of, of the urban local bodies or the local bodies in general and uh, non-availability of fund cannot be taken as an excuse for non-fulfillment non of such duties. Similarly, in BL Vadhera case, the court endorsed this idea or endorsed this <coughs> this point that there is a constitutional duty upon the government to have a government to have proper mechanism for waste management that emanates from that derives from its duty under article 27 to take enough adequate steps for the improvement of public health for the improvement of public health. And the last point in this module that need that is a case study of ship breaking that is pertinent in the context of hazardous wastes. <coughs> ship breaking in India has been a major source of uh, foreign currency and another important reason why it was sustained because it provides uh, provides significant quantity of steel to the Indian economy and it also provides direct and inter indirect employment to huge number of people. This was the major reason why this was uh, this ship breaking industry uh, <coughs> was sustained in India. At the same time this poses significant threat to human health and environment and this also needs to be uh, needs to be <coughs> examined in the context of large number of ships being brought in to India from outside and therefore Basel convention on control of transboundary movement of hazardous waste and disposal is also pertinent in this context where India is a party to this con to this convention. I mean at least I mean there has been several controversial issues in the context of ship breaking for example Clemens Hue in 2006 where a German ship came to India for uh, for disposal and Blue Lady case in 2006 again and there is an there is recently Exxon Valdez case in 2012. I mean we are not discussing all these cases uh, cases in separate instead we will try to ch try to understand what happened in this course in this in these cases and what has been the approach of the Supreme Court in all these cases. I mean to, to, to summarize the approach of the Supreme Court the, the court's approach has always been overwhelmingly focusing on the economic advantage of ship breaking industry in India and to put in a different I mean that means that means it, it resulted in undermining the ecological the impacts of ship breaking industries on the public health and the environment. And the court also emphasized on the enormous quantity of steel to be recover, recovered from the ship breaking industry and court also emphasized the employment benefits of ship breaking industry. However, what we can conclude from these cases is that I mean there is a question of weighing or striking a proper balance between the economic and the ecological aspect of ship breaking industry. In all these cases whether it was it was Blue Lady or Exxon Valdez case I mean the Supreme Court seemed to have uh, have uh, have gave more important given more importance to the economic aspect of ship breaking industries and thereafter I mean in all these cases court granted permission permission to to to, to proceed with ship breaking processes 
and this I mean again I mean it is it's pertinent to note that the court recognized or court granted permission despite there was enough there was significant or there was enough reports from non-governmental organization highlighting the serious adverse implications on health and environment. So, to, to summarize what we have seen is that in India we have a number of legal instruments that focuses on waste as far as rules framed under the Environment Protection Act 1986 is concerned all this the approach has been to have separate legal instruments addressing issues issues, issues relating to different kind of wastes say for example, municipal solid waste or electronic waste. The key institutional mechanism is central pollution control board, state pollution control board and local bodies. And in addition to this judiciary has played significant roles whether one, one, <coughs> one, one should agree with or not. For example, as far as adoption of municipal solid waste management rules, con rules are concerned the, the Supreme Court has played significant role. But however, in the case of ship breaking industries the critique is that the Supreme Court has uh, uh, the judiciary has aligned with or weighed or gave more importance to the economic aspects of ship breaking industries and undermined the ecological or the environmental aspects and public health aspects of uh, the ship breaking industries. So, to, 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 to end the key challenges in this context is uh, we have enough number of rules, enough number of legal instruments, but the implementation apparently continues to be a key challenge. And another major important part is the control of generation of wastes. It is good that I mean we are focusing on, on collection and transportation and disposal and recycling and reuse of, in, of, of wastes. However, the generation of wastes needs to be also focused and this, this, this might require a significant change in, in the mode of production and, cons and consumption we are, we are following right now. Because unless and until we, we change our mode of production and consumption or consumption or production and consumption patterns and we will continue to generate uh, we will continue to generate more and more wastes and then waste management will continue to be a key challenge thank you